Hey there everybody, Rachel here from RachTheStamper.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really easy card with the stamp set game one. This is brand new. My son loves playing chess. I love playing solitaire, pinochle, you name it. So I thought this was a super fun card. So this is the card I created. As you can see, it's very simple, but has a lot of visual interest. These stamps stamp so incredibly. Now I'm going to tell you, I am going to use a uh, VersaFine ink today because it gives really good detail when you stamp um, detailed images. It does take a little bit longer to dry because it's a pigment ink. This is not an ink that Stampin' Up! carries, unfortunately, but you can purchase it on Amazon. So I'll make sure that I add the link um, below and also to my blog post. But what I did to give the cards a realistic effect, if you can see that, is I actually clear emboss them. So they turned out really cute. I actually did do a set of these cards originally in black, but then I kind of thought since they were uh, hearts, they needed to be red. So I went and redid them, but really easy card. So let me show you what we're going to do. So for this, you're going to need a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and it can be, um, you can trim it down. So it's kind of up to you which way you want to go with it. But we're going to make one that's just a little bit more of a stepped up version of this. So that's why I have this card still here. We're going to do one that's a little bit different. So for this card, what you can do is put this one to the side. Is you can stamp it ahead of time and trim it down or you can kind of do it after the fact. It's really up to you. Now I did leave the playing cards out of the background and I just used all the other stamps. That way it would kind of highlight the playing cards. So we have the chess pieces and the uh, checkerboard. I guess it could be a chessboard too. We have the die. You could even add in, there's a little um, club there, which is cute. This would be also a great stamp set for St. Patrick's Day card if you wanted to make one. So again, I'm going to use the VersaFine ink. Now the one thing about this ink, as I said, it is a pigment ink, so you definitely have to let it dry. But I want to show you just how well these images stamp. And I'm just gonna kind of be random with it. Oh man, such amazing detail on this. And I'm gonna, you can either turn your paper or you can turn your stamped image. Either one doesn't really make a difference. And then I'm gonna just take this and fill it in. I'm gonna fill this in here. One more on here hanging off the edge. And then I'm gonna grab the die and fill those in. Kind of just turning them a little bit each way. Probably could add another one in there, but since I already did that one, what I'm going to do is actually going to go ahead. Mm. Sorry, I haven't uh, pulled this stamp off since I mounted it, which probably wasn't smart, but I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with the club. I'll just kind of put this a couple different places. Oops. Doesn't really need to be all the way on. Do want to be careful. I did get a little ring there. I got a little aggressive with my stamping. All right, so we'll leave that for those for now. So you have your background. So it's really, really detailed, very cool. But again, it does need time to dry. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the cards. Now you could do the cards in black. It's kind of up to you. Really depends on what you want to do. But I kind of figured since they were hearts, I would do them in red. So let me close this up and actually while I'm at it, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my sentiment. I'll change this one up just a little bit. So I'm going to stamp this over here and yeah, that's a little crooked. Let's see. Try again. That's a little better. So I'm going to stamp this that way this has time to dry and we can trim this down. So I'm going to grab my real red ink. If you didn't want to use this, you could also use Poppy Parade. Really, you could even use a darker ink. So you could do um, Mary Merlot if you wanted to, or even Cherry Cobbler. Let's try Cherry Cobbler and see what that looks like instead. Let's give that a peek. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. And then all I basically did was just fussy cut it out. So ink this up, stamp it at the bottom so I can trim it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's a little bit darker, but it does give a pretty cool detail just in general to the stamp. Now, what we want to do for this is we actually want to um, 
go ahead and we're going to Versamark this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it just a second. And I could have done this ahead of time, but you know I didn't. I'm going to grab my handy dandy coffee filter and some clear embossing powder. And we're going to just heat emboss this. So it looks fairly clear. So here's what you can do. You can do this two different ways. You can go ahead and trim it out ahead of time and do it. I'm going to turn on my heat tool. Or you can do it after the fact. So this is very well stained. It's not going to transfer though, so no worries. I do want to make sure it's, for the most part, mostly dry. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp over, covering the image. So you could do this ahead of time by cutting, or you can do it after the fact. And this one, I'm actually going to put two layers on. So I'm going to show you to make it a little simpler. You're going to sprinkle the clear embossing powder on. Just tap it off. Okay, you're going to heat it to set. Now, you can go about this two different ways. And you can see this part is heat because it's shiny and this is dull. So you could do this two different ways. You could re-stamp it with the Versamark. Or what you can do, since this is still pretty hot, and let me just finish heating it and I'll show you. So since it's still hot, you can actually just re-sprinkle. Tap it off once again. And then reheat to set it. And the more times you do this, you'll just get basically a thicker layer on there. And it gives it just a really heavy look. So I'm just going to do it once more. Just for the heck of it, because I like it. And it does heat and melt much faster each time because the heat gun is still on. So, there we go. Looks really cool. It's got a super thick coat of embossing powder. In case you haven't ever seen this, this is a, um, it's called the Boss. It's a heat tool gun holder. So you can actually turn this one and heat it and this will stay away from everything. And that way when you do use it, it heats up super duper fast. So really, really cool. You can find that on Etsy or Facebook at my friend's um, site. And they are called Crafters Solutions. It's Lisa and John who run it. They're really, really cool. All right, so I'm going to give this just a second to just dry. Now, since I did this a little bit darker, what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to use um, Cherry Cobbler. So I have my base card. So this is basic black. It's uh, five and a half by, I'm sorry, four and a quarter by 11, score at five and a half. So we have that there. We're going to trim this down, but I just want to give that another second just to make sure it's dry. And hopefully, I might even have a piece in here. Let's see. Usually, I do. I was going to say, of course, today I probably don't. So I'll keep this out just in case. So we're going to need a piece of cherry cobbler to layer. So what we're going to do is let me just check this out and see what this measures i'm going to go ahead and just trim this up so we're going to cut this down to four by five and a quarter so four perfect five and a quarter oh it's already trimmed how do you even like that and then this one's going to nope you know what i'm sorry that's why three and three quarters by five come on rach i'm actually going to trim this side i'm going to trim this to five and we'll take this part off. You could take a, an eighth off of each side if you wanted to. doesn't really matter. And again, you can also trim this ahead of time, so it's kind of up to you. So this one we want to be, yep, that's too small. This is going to be five and a quarter by four. All right, there's that. Put these away. And then all we have to do really is assemble. Now I did go ahead and cut something out ahead of time. 
and I used something that kind of already had laying around. So I had a piece of um, champagne foil that I was going to use for something else. So I went ahead and die cut this with one of the nested label dies. I thought we could kind of put it behind. Hopefully it'll be big enough, but if not, we will work with that. So I'm just going to take my snips and cut out my card deck here. So if you have any friends who love to play cards, love to play poker, Texas Hold'em, really any kind of cards, I'm sure they would absolutely love this card. It's really cool. Now I have some ideas of what I want to do with this in addition to this that I might kind of start to try to modify it a little bit with multiple decks of cards. And what I'm thinking is I might end up just having to kind of trim some of them out and layer them together. That's my plan anyway. We'll see if it works. I'm just gonna go around here and just make this a little bit neater so it looks like cards. And then same thing with this one. I'm kind of rounding it so it kind of follows the shape of the cards, but not really very much work to it. So there you can see you have your shiny cards. It looks like playing cards. I think this would also look really cool if we actually, or I should say if we, if I took the time to cut these out and layer them together, maybe space them out. So I'm gonna work on something like that in the future as well. So let me just crease this. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put these layers down. If you wanted to do something with a little bit more um, visual interest, you could even stamp the background of the cherry cobbler with something before you put it down. So there's an option for that. So again, this one is a little bit different of a color combination. We have basic black and cherry cobbler instead of the first version we did, which had real red. Just gonna put some glue on the back of this. I just did this on a plain piece of Whisper White cardstock. Doesn't really make a difference which direction you go in. That's kind of up to you as well. Oops, got a little goopy with my glue there. But luckily, this glue dries clear, so we shouldn't have any problem. Just gonna wipe that off. There we go, perfect. Okay, so I have my cards. I also have my sentiment. So this one, I just kind of angled both ends for this one. For this other one, let me just bring this in a little bit. I'm gonna trim in the edge of this and the edge of this. I didn't cut anything off, nope. Trim the end here. And I think just for something different for this one, I'm just gonna flag the end. You could also do this with your banner triple punch if you wanted to, but I think that's kind of neat. Another thing you could even do is kind of give a little angle to this. So you could kind of make it so it's more like a, a flag, just like that. So we'll see how we're going to eventually put this down. Now you are definitely going to need a layer of Whisper White if you're going to want to write anything inside your card. So you could just put a layer in and add a really nice sentiment. So let's see what this looks like. I think that looks kind of neat because it's just a little bit of a shine behind there. And then we'll go with the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on, I think, with dimensionals. So I'm just going to put a couple dimensionals in the center here. And layer this, let's see, what does it look like? I kind of even like the curl to this because of the way I heat embossed it. Now, if you were to, um, this one I did where I actually cut it out first and it only has one layer. But if you've ever held cards or played cards with someone for a while, I know all of my grandparents, when we played cards together, they were all curled. So I kind of like the look of that. But if you don't, you can certainly change it. Put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of this. And let's see, maybe we could change this up a little bit this over here. So I'm just going to press this just because the foil backing sometimes makes it a little bit slippery at first. So I want to make sure that it gets some purchase on the card there. And then this one, we can even, oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take our cherry cobbler marker and I'm just going to go over the edge of this just to kind of make it stand out a little bit since it's a lot of black on white. So they kind of separate a little bit visually. And the other thing you could do too is you could even put a little bit of a layer if you wanted to do like a double layer of this behind there would be really cool too. Let's actually see what that looks like. I'm just going to trim out a little piece because you could layer this right below. Yeah, that'll look pretty cool. 
Okay, so I'm gonna trim this. Just gonna kinda approximate my little flagging down here at the end just like so. And then what we'll do is we'll layer this on top. And I think what I might do is, actually I might bring this one off. I'm just gonna have the flag on the bottom. I don't know why, but I think that looks neat. So I'm gonna end up lining these up here like that, and then we'll just trim this one to fit. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of liquid glue here. Oops, now so now after the fact, I didn't even knew that need to do the little bending thing that I did, but it still will be pretty cool. So I have that line up exactly. I'm just gonna hold on to that and then snip this off. Oops, went a little too close. There we go. And then you could pop this up with dimensionals as well. So might as well just make it a little bit more fun. Just using the end of my sheet here. Let's see, I think I have one more here I can put at the end. And then even instead of this kind of being in a line, you could do something like having it come from the corner or something. I don't know, I'm going to put this up kind of at the top so it lines up almost with the edge. So two very similar but slightly different versions of the same card. So again, we do have Cherry Cobbler for this one. This one we did in real red. We added a little bit of foil element to the back of this one. This one was very, very simple. But I do think, and again, I know this is not a, um, a Stampin' Up! product. However, the VersaFine ink really is great for detail. So if you don't have your hands on one of those, you can see it will dry up a little bit. So this is a teeny bit lighter once it dries. But it gives such incredible detail to these stamps, which I think they truly, truly deserve. So... And I think that little piece of embossing, since this was previously embossed with snowflakes, you can't even really tell. I think it looks pretty cool. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and taking time to watch. If you'd like to get any of these supplies to make these cards, you can head to my online store, which is rachthestamper.stampinup.net. I will put all of the supplies used with a link to the VersaFine on my blog, which is reachthestamper.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to either leave me a comment or send me an email. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button. But do make sure that you turn on the little bell for notifications so when I make a new video or if I go live, you'll be able to find me. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.